Welcome, welcome back. All right, we're going to be weighing in today. All right, I've been trying to stay away from this sort of stuff because usually I don't really care. But now that more and more accusations are coming out, more ex-workers. So what this is about is Mr. Beast. I don't know if you know who he is. I mean, predominantly it's only younger people that do know about Mr. Beast. And when I mean younger, I mean, you know, much younger, like teenagers, early 20s maybe, and kids as well. So Mr. Beast is probably the biggest YouTube personality in the world i mean i'll quickly show you here as soon as you you can see here this is his main page um which is 309 million followers and then as you can see down here he's got another page 25 million 45 million 34 million 45 million so in total you know he's got like i don't know and that's just these channels this guy gets ridiculous amount of views i mean 142 million views on a video I mean, it's crazy, right? It's just absolutely crazy. He has the market. He literally is the biggest personality out there. But the thing that baffles me is, is that there were some accusations that came out from a previous worker where the previous worker was talking to little kids, okay? So a little kid in the past, um, illegal stuff, you know, underage, and pretty much grooming this kid. Now, you know, as you can see here, so he's been accused of hiring registered sex offenders um, and more and more accusations have come out. A lot of ex-workers, you know, people who used to work for him have come out and absolutely owned him. I mean, you can see it on this one here. We'll watch this video today, actually, just to have a look at what some of the accusations are. But as you can see behind here, let's see how we move that. As you can see there, you know, I worked for Mr. Beast. He's a fraud. Mr. Beast is never going to recover from this. So all these people that know him and used to work for him are taking this opportunity to dunk on him. So these past employees, I mean, as you can see with this guy here, he he pretty much never had a YouTube channel. And then just overnight, you know, he's got 30,000 followers, 2.4 million views on the video, 20,000 comments. And, you know, he made a GoFundMe page and he never realized that it'll blow up this much. And he has now taken down that, that um, GoFundMe. So as you can see here, he's taken it down. He says he's sorry. He's not asking for handouts. So he's taken down his GoFundMe, etc. Because obviously there's been a lot of blowback on that. But we're going to break this down. We're going to look at what he tells him. And especially if you're a Mr. Beast fan, it's worth watching. If you know people who like Mr. Beast, share this with him. Because not everyone will know about it. And I think it's definitely worth knowing just to see if he knew about it and if he's kind of just lying about it. So we'll have a bit of a watch and you let me know what you think below. So as these accusations keep building, I mean, his girlfriend says only half of them are true. Um, he says he'll do an internal investigation. So the, the main worry about him is, is that apparently he knew that they were registered sex offenders, but he still let them work for him, even though majority of his viewers and subscribers are young kids. So if you know that, then that is obviously just a recipe for disaster. And I think, you know, that's negligence. But yet again, we don't know the truth yet. So once it all comes out, it comes out. But in the meantime, let's watch this video and break it down. And before we do as well, if you do want to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. We'll be able to kind of share these sorts of things of everyone. And it's just fighting back against the mainstream media so you don't have to fall for those same talking points, for those same lies that we have for so many years. We can kind of fight back in the end, but let's watch this. Everything I'm about to say is 100% true. And if at any point I say anything that may be controversial, suspect, or too good to be true, and I don't have the evidence to back it up, then call me a liar. But I guarantee you that won't happen. Ever since I was a young kid, I always wanted to be famous. And it wasn't until 2018 of November that I knew that I wanted to be a YouTuber. Sadly, it took me four years to realize that I actually suck. Like, I'm like I'm really bad. I'm super cringe. And don't worry, because I am aware of this. But I know one thing and that one thing is I'm good at editing and I'm great at creating ideas for others. I was meant to be off camera rather than on and I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is being taken advantage of. I was lied to, manipulated, and thrown away like a piece of garbage. Honestly though, sometimes I kind of think that this was pretty genius. Like how could a person so high in status be challenged by a person like me? It's like me going to uh, Elon Musk and saying, well he did this and he did that and no one would ever believe me because I'm literally just a nobody. So I have Chris Tyson to thank for 
allowing me to have this platform to tell my truth. February 2nd, 2024, I went snowboarding like I normally do, and I got an email in which I thought was a scam. I mean, for real, look at this. Even you would think the same thing if you got a random email saying, Mr. Beast follow up, when you didn't even remember reaching out in the first place. Whether that's true or not, I certainly don't remember reaching out to him. In my line of work, I work for big name YouTubers, mostly in the sports niche, but it has its range. I've done videos for House of Highlights, Game Day, Zach TTG, Jesser, Papa Stanimus, Not So Air Jordan, and then I currently edit for MMG. Not to mention, I did do the 2022 NFL playoff commercials. So it's pretty normal to have people reach out to me because they've seen my work from other creators and all the other work that I've done for them. So when I got this email, I decided to give it a chance. I responded in the email and then I proceeded to post a Facebook post because I was so happy. Everything is dated and to make sure this information is credible, it helps it set well with you. Pay attention to these days. It's not premeditated and I obviously had no idea Chris Tyson would be such a perv. So there's no way I would make these posts in advance of like some kind of trick. I also have decided to log into my actual Facebook and show my actual email rather than screenshots so you know that it's not photoshopped so on february 2nd i posted so i got a job offer from mr beast today video call on monday wish your boy luck now let's go into the comments because i want you guys to be definitively sure that i didn't just make this post 26 weeks ago all this is 26 weeks ago and it would take a whole bunch of time to just make up all these fake people and then to go on their pro then to go in their profile and see that they're friends with the same people i'm friends with having what 62 mutual friends and then going you know it's a little bit too much here right so i didn't none of these are faked at all this is this is my actual Facebook page. So that's the post I made on February 2nd. Now, I will go to my email, but for now, I really do want to show you the post on Facebook so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So in a nutshell, before we get into all the details, Mr. Beast gave me a fake job, flew me out there to work, I worked my butt off, took all my ideas, sent me home and told me there wasn't a job available, and then proceeded to not only oh. do that, but then to take my ideas still and then make a video. So that's what we're going to be covering here. Um, I mean, we're talking about a billionaire here. Every, if you know who Mr. Beast is you know exactly what we're talking about and i can hang up my my editing my editing tool set whatever you want to call it dude that the all that stuff i'm not even going to be editing for the guy i'm going to be using my mata i'm going to be making ideas for him to make videos i i swear to god that's exactly that's what the that's what my job is it's not editing and that's what i got from our our meetings was you know mr beast jimmy he passes me a piece of paper that says i blew up the world's most expensive tanks or something and he gives me a thumbnail that has a picture of him blowing up a tank and it's my job to make a video out of that so that was february 8th on february 13th is when i went to the airport the post says years of hard work has led me to this my heart is pounding out of my chest and as you can see see i'm flying to raleigh durham north carolina and after that take a very quick look at what i posted afterwards february 26 nothing about mr beast february 9th or april 19th nothing about mr beast april 25th may 3rd may 9th may 19th nothing about mr beast and do, you, and do you know why i didn't post anything about mr beast from that time is because something went horribly wrong and i was way too embarrassed to tell people about it because i had made so much noise such a fuss about me going to mr beast company and then i just got kind of screwed over so i didn't post a single thing about that now you guys are wondering i want to see the proof i want to see the correspondence i want to see everything that happened between you guys i want that information well I got it. So this is the first email I ever got from a guy named Dylan. I can't say his last name, so it will be blurred out for the rest of the video because I just don't want to get out his personal like uh, PI information. So, and like I said, the guy who he said first of all he didn't know he was a perv or whatever is this is the guy who was talking to, who is apparently trans, right? Um, and was also talking to little kids and, like I said, was you know grooming them. And all this info came out years later, and even the kid who's now older said, oh, it's fine. We were only making, you know, sexual kind of jokes and conversation. And then everyone's like, that's wrong. That's an adult talking to a young kid. That is illegal. So you just admitted that it is illegal. We're going to keep it on a first name basis, and we're just going to say Dylan. Dylan sent me an email, uh, and it says the, in the subject, 
Mr. Beast follow-up. Hey, thanks for submitting your info to our casting team. We received your submission at this time. We're fully casted for our current videos. That's not what we want to pay attention to. What we want to pay attention to is the second paragraph. Working at Mr. Beast, we are collaborative first, and I was forward your submission. Don't know how you got it, but let's keep going. If you're interested, I would love to chat about your potential full-time or contract role work on Mr. Beast's creative team. February 2nd, 2024, that he sent me the email. It was February 3rd, 2024, that I responded to the email. I wanted to make sure after I made the post, I was like, oh crap, this actually might be a scam. Let me go back and do some research. And then the next day I was like, you know what? I feel good about, good about this. I don't have to delete my post. So I was able to go ahead and uh, reply to him confidently. Now this email here is my very first, I guess, direct exploration call, whatever. Basically me being able to meet them for the very first time. Like I said on my Facebook and like I said before in the email, Monday, February 5th, 2024. My second call was not only with Dylan, but now it has Dylan, Hoodie, and someone named Kara, which I have never met. I've Yet again, what this matters as well is that this guy is making content for kids. He knew about possibly that these people, you know, sorry, he did know that they were sexual um, predators and he still hired them. And the reason why it matters is because this person is the biggest YouTuber. This guy reaches, you know, billions of people a year and kids predominantly. So that's the reason why it matters. So if you know someone, you know, just rethink if, if we want to support this sort of person. I've never once met, met Kara, so you won't hear anything about a Kara in this video. And this took place on Wednesday, February 7th, 2024 at 2.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That was the, th the second call. For another email also on February 7th, 2024, this was directly right after the call I had with Hoodie, Dylan, and Kara. And within that conversation, they basically told me that I needed to make a prompt. And when I say prompt, let me just read the email. Hello, Ty, we would like for you to come in for a vibe check. Vibe check means you come in for a few days to see if you're good, see if you're a good worker, see, you know, people are not going to be annoyed by you and see if they can move further on with the hiring pro process. If possible, we'd like to come in, like for you to come in for three days at some point next week. I've got a recruiting coordinator, Leslie, CC'd on this email. She will help you figure out the days, what you can make it and handle your travel arrangements. Now, this is the most important email of all. What they want me to do is to do two video prompts. Attach, you will find two video prompts. Pick one that inspires you the most and document and write out how you envision it envision it really let your creativity flow and assume everything is possible so in each of these prompts one of them is the world's most dangerous trap room and the other is 24 hours to spend one billion dollars i went with the world's most dangerous trap room because spending one billion dollars in 24 hours just seems kind of boring and quite frankly linear i i think i have more creativeness than that that's just not something i want to do and then like we mentioned before this is leslie sending me an email thanks ty are you able to fly in on tuesday be on office wednesday friday wednesday through friday and fly back out on saturday morning of course I said yes and she gave me all my travel info so now we're going to get into like the more just deep in the details here so like I said if I don't show proof don't assume that I'm telling the truth if I don't show proof for everything that I'm saying assume that I'm literally lying about everything that I'm saying okay so in that email uh it did say I, I, I realized that the the footage was kind of cloudy when it comes to OBS and recording the screen so I will put screenshots of those, those messages up there um but in the email it did say that I had those two prompts and the two prompts was the something about spending spending a billion dollars in a day in 24 hours and the other one was the most the world's most dangerous trap rooms so we're taking a look right here I have the prompt and it says the world's most dangerous trap rooms Room. And in my intro, I have PT Hallway, I have the Elevator, I have the Squid Games Glass Challenge, I have Bloodthirst, and I have Mole Maze. And within these things in my prompt, I do have like variations. So first one, I see the variation. So right here, uh, underneath Elevator, I wrote one thing. The ultimate goal is to escape the elevator before it reaches the top floor and the bottom falls out beneath you. But I also have a second variation. Pick, lock, tool, groove, chain in the wall. Goal is the same except the elevator moves a little faster. Move the chain, object, lock, pick, tool to unlock the locks on the roof and the elevator reaches the top. So, you ever play those games where there's like a, there's like a little, little plastic thing and it has grooves all over, it's like a maze, and you gotta move that ball through. Well, essentially, that's what I did for this video, except you're chained to the thing and you gotta move the ball through the grooves with the key that has a key on it, so you can reach one lock and there's locks on each four corners of the elevator. So when you get this lock, now you gotta go through the maze again. And now you gotta go and take this lock out. 
and, and like that so you can escape the elevator if you don't the whole thing just plummets to the ground i thought that was a pretty dope idea right so i i did that but i also made two of them because i wanted to make it make a variation of it so also here in squid games that was another thing i just wanted i made a different variation of what was already done and i did that that was part of my of, of my uh of my pitch now well let's keep going down because i think it's somewhere around i think actually no it's, it's the squid games one right here in the second variation of the squid games i say mario style Floating obstacle course. Instead of using floating blocks, which is impossible, we will use floating rack hoisted by four cranes. Floating rack hoisted 200 feet in the air. Each section of the obstacle course will change depending on the distance made. Start from one platform to another to advance. Safety harness will be eliminated due to the net underneath the platform. Now, with that, so we have an idea that I wanted to do. So I want to talk a little bit more about my experience of being at the Mr. Beast warehouse. I've never once personally ever have ever signed an NDA and all my emails and all my correspondences and all my text messages, I have never once ever signed an NDA. But what I think they're what they're doing, there is an iPad as soon as you get to the warehouse, as soon as you walk in and you have to sign in and they ask you things like your first name, last name, email address, all that phone number and stuff like that. And I have a very, very, very high suspicion that when you sign your name in there and you sign in, I think you're also signing an NDA. They don't come out and say it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. That's just something that I think. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying I'm thinking because I don't want to get sued by them because I'm like, like I said earlier, I'm a nobody. Anyways, I get to the warehouse and they have multiple different like studios. Uh, studios as in workshops where you work at creative thumbnail editing ideation all these things right so they take me to for legal purposes i will say for legal reasons i will say studio one studio one of creative i go to studio one you know whatever it's all right we're working on the video we're doing the um in 10 minutes like actual 10 minutes in 10 minutes this video explodes and i mean this video this building explodes i worked on that for a little bit wasn't really feeling it wasn't really my jam we we went out uh i will post put a little video up here of me working on like a little laser challenge for that it wasn't really my jam wasn't really that good at all either anyway if i'm being if i'm being honest so i went to the next one uh and this is and by the way i'm sorry i'm skipping all over the place this was actually the second day of me being there because the first day i spent my entire day in my hotel which was boring but for whatever reasons i couldn't get i couldn't go in the first day so i spent the first day in my hotel the second day is when i would start you know going to these workshops uh on the third day i was told to go to a different studio we'll say studio two and i'm working on a video and the video is what was the video's name it was a, it was another one that had nothing to do with anything anyways i go through the whole day or mo well i say a good portion of the day about five hours so around like two o'clock p.m there's a guy named hoodie hoodie it was also in the other in one of the emails earlier and he's like in and when it comes to chain of command i think he's i think he's third in chain of command total so you have mr beast you have tyler you have jackson the head writer and then you have hoodie and hoodie was in charge of all these things i actually had my vibe check call with hoodie i had my second call with hoodie i was in contact with hoodie and leslie the coordinator if you coordinator if you remember that and everything was going through hoodie the guy's a great guy he's a great guy he took care of me he he really like gave me great information great feedback so as i'm going through this video i want you guys to remember i'm not attacking these people i'm attacking the company because whatever happens in the company is a reflection of mr beast it's not a reflection of the people who are doing the things like the, uh, what they're doing your company is a reflection of what happens it doesn't matter who does it if your company is ran that way it is a reflection of you you got to take responsibility here so i do my pitch and hoodie says you know what i want you to go shadow some people uh for the rest of the day i want you to go work with this team and see how you can contribute to them so let's break down the positions in the mr beast company there's no horrible this would be going through all of this this whole thing you're thinking you're going to get the opportunity of a lifetime and then they just freaking rip you your guts out and just tell you hey sorry we're just taking all your ideas and everything that you thought of and we're gonna take it and you're getting nothing for it you have c1 c1 is the head person of that department so if you're in creative you're c1 so creative studio one c1 so there's there's creative studio two and there's a c1 for that creatives uh creative studio three there's a c1 for that and then ideation Studio one, C1. Ideation, Studio two, same thing. They're just levels. They're just like the head honcho of that of that department. And then within that, you also have a C2 and a C3. I assume C2 is like the person who, who are in between. And I know C3 is like the bitch of the company. They just write notes. They, they don't do anything. They just write notes, whatever is said. They take notes, they take minutes, and they write everything. They're like the like the the, the grunts of, of that department. I went to this new room that Hoodie told me to go to, and there was three positions. Well, there was two positions at the time. I don't know where the third one 
one's at. There was only a C3 and then a C2. I mean, a C1. The C1's name was C... The C3, I, I, I mean, I talked to him for like 30 seconds. I don't really don't know what his name was. And we were working on a video. We're working on a video called The World's Most Dangerous Obstacle Course. Now we are getting to the part where you finally can understand why, why I'm so mad, so upset that I got scammed. I got absolutely scammed by the biggest YouTuber in the entire world. This is where you're gonna find out why I was upset. Now it's gonna come full circle. I'm gonna have to tell you everything. We're working on the video, World's Most Dangerous Obstacle Course, and I want to show some videos and proof of what I did. From here on out, I'm gonna start speaking more theoretically so I don't get sued. So there may, may, or may not, have walls in the Mr. B studio where they're all dry erase marker where you can just write anything So if you have an idea you're like oh crap, I don't want to forget it right on the wall This is a picture of my my pitch that I wrote so you see right here you get it really close bloodthirst. Let's see Elevator, let's even get close glass challenge right here um, PT hallway sound familiar. It's my prompt. So this is what I pitched to I pitched to hitty I mean hoodie This is what I pitched to hoodie and I didn't put my variations in there. I just put the ones that I wanted. And I verbally said my variations just in case they didn't like my, my original ones. This is the world's most dangerous obstacle course. So C C1 has been working on this with me and the other guy. I don't know his name. And we're working on, like, as you can see, the intro, the hook, the money mechanic. Right here, we're looking at, this is the most important part. It's just rooms. When I saw rooms, when we were brainstorming, brainstorming rooms, I'm like, dang, okay. Rooms. I just did a prompt on the world's dangerous uh, trap rooms. This is perfect. I can do this it doesn't exactly follow the obstacle course so i can kind of use my room idea with this i mean if you look at all these ideas whatever it doesn't matter the one thing that i'm looking at the most is all the way at the bottom it looks like it says marlo but it says mario mario is my um this was my idea i'm inspired by mario because my kids love the mario movie they love it so much they named my dog mario hold on mario 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 come here Good boy. This is Mario, my dog. Living proof that my kids named my dog Mario because they, they love the Mario, they love the movie Mario so much. So I was inspired by that. And I, I think I put that in my prompt as well. If anyone's ever seen Mario, they have the floating blocks. And I wanted to see how I can make a, an obstacle course with those floating blocks. I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it and I realized it's just impossible to make floating blocks, blocks in the air. I don't know how you would do it. Logistically, it's just not gonna work. And physically, I don't think it would work either. So I came up with an idea with a trellis net. Or I came out the deal with the trust. Taking a look at this picture right here. So this was my idea here. I wanted to make an, ob an obstacle course in the air, but like somehow incorporate it with the Mario idea. Somehow just, I don't know, somehow do that. This is a picture that I drew for, for, this, for this pitch for this idea. And I realized that, you know what? I couldn't do the floating block, so I wanted to make sure I can do it another way. So I, I had an idea of a truss with four cranes holding it up and I wanted to be able to go across it. That was just the first section of it. Because if you look a little bit more to the right of this picture, there's like a helicopter and a guy hanging from a ladder and there's platforms down here. One, two, and three, there's platforms right there. That was just the first section of it. I wanted the first, I wanted the intro of the video to be something so outlandish, so crazy that they just, a viewer had to keep watching. I did steal the, the no net at the bottom. I call it a net. Or no, not no net, a net down there. That's why it says a net down there because it's, it's, just, it's just a joke that we thought were funny. It was funny. Um, but I did steal that from one of the other uh, Mac videos. I just figured why not? It makes it such much of a better video. So I pitched this idea and they absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. The only person who didn't like it was C1 because it wasn't her idea. So when it came down to our meeting later that day, so we were there for for hours and hours and hours. And like I said, there was a there's a hierarchy. There's Mr. Beast, Tyler Jackson, the head writer, and Hoodie. Well, Jackson comes down there and we're having a meeting at nine o'clock at night. The meeting goes all the way to midnight. And then they say at the very end, we're gonna need some, we're gonna need all hands on deck to, uh, on deck on this. We're gonna need the help. We're gonna need the we're gonna need the creativity. We need everyone to to pull their weight. Does anyone have anything that's gonna help us? You know, with this. And I told him my idea. I brought up every single thing. Not only the, just this idea, but the rest of the video. <sighs> they loved it. The budget was a, was originally 1.7 million. That intro alone cost 1.7 million dollars. Just the intro alone. And the reason why I didn't want to bring it up immediately was only because if the budget was 1.7 million and I'm here to prove myself, I can't start with going by over budget. Say, well, it would work because who they're gonna trust? You're gonna trust someone who works there for 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 months, weeks, years. Or you're, gonna check, or you're gonna trust some guy like me that just flew here a couple days ago. So it was a little risky, but they loved it. We stayed to midnight. They 
freaking loved it. Got a, I got a pat in the back. Jackson was excited. Hoodie was excited. The only person who wasn't excited was a C1 that I kind of stepped over because, like they say in the company, it don't matter if you're C1, C2, C3. C3 can be a C2. C2 can be a C1. C1 can be a C3 by tomorrow. All right, so at this point, I've pitched my idea. They love it. They've set a date. They set a location. And now they have a new renewed budget for this video. And everything's great. I'm so happy. I text all my friends. I call everyone. I'm like, yeah, dude. You know, they, and I got, and also, so after all that, I'm feeling great. I got a verbal confirmation that I was good to go. Everything was perfect. I know about everything was literally perfect until I got home. Until I got home and that's when everything started to happen. Unfortunately, we have decided not to move forward with your candidacy at this time. We really appreciate you coming out and vibing with wow. us. We could, we would consider you for a role like this in the future, but timing isn't quite right. Uh, and the rest are about receipts. So at first I was like, you know what? Maybe that's, maybe that's true. But then I started to think about a little bit more. I started to think about a little bit more and I didn't, I didn't want to let it bother me. I didn't want to let it bother me. So I said, Hey Dylan, that's a bummer to hear, but I appreciate the opportunity. Maybe another time, like you said, candidly, may I ask if I presented myself poorly or rubbed the crew wrongly in any way? Talking about here because I know I did. Also, I sent my receipts. Uh, and I was, this is talking about my dog because uh, I had spent, I had spent like $400 for my dog to be uh, boarded. So all that information, uh, he said, hello, Ty, you did not rub anyone uh, the wrong way or present yourself poorly. We're going through some reorganization with the team and are limited on roles we have open for teams. I appreciate you sending the receipt, blah, 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 whatever. This is where I started to like say, hmm, but I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything at all. Not a single word until I saw this on Twitter. Just uploaded the most insane video we've ever done. Go watch. Take a look at this picture. Take a good, hard look at this picture. Does that remind you of anything you've seen so far? Does it remind you of anything you've seen remotely close to it? Or does it look like the exact same thing that I drew? The exact same thing that I pitched? Everything. Do you want to know how much I got paid for that? Zero. I didn't get paid a single dime. This man, this company, his employees not only took the time to get to exploit me, to have me work for them under the false pretenses of a job that wasn't, you know, that, that they, they weren't available or, or able to give at the time, yet they had many people, many people go in and out, in and out. On my second day, there was like a different group that I saw the day before, and then they were on their last day, and then on my last day, there was a group of people that was, that was that was their first day. You're trying to tell me you didn't have any positions, you didn't have any positions at all, at all, yet you had all those people, and not only did you do that, you used my idea. A lot of people will say, you know what, legally, legally he had the right to do that. I don't, I don't know in what legal standpoint he could. I could be wrong, but let's think about this though. We're talking about a billionaire. We're talking about the world's biggest YouTuber. How is that so hard to just compensate for someone for some work? How how hard is it to compensate someone for their ideas that make you millions and made me zero? I don't care if it was legally done or not. Like, think about it. We all have hearts here. We're all watching. We're all watching YouTube or watching YouTube videos for the same exact reason. How messed up is that? You're a billionaire, dude. It's not like it's some other, I'm some some guy on the street or you're some guy on the street. You're a billionaire, man. Pay people for their ideas. Don't just fly them out there, take their ideas and send them home. You're giving these people false hope. You're taking their dreams from them. You're taking everything that's about them. Their creative the creativeness, their fucking imagination, imagination. I'm sorry. I'm actually getting worked up right now. You can't do that to people. You can't do that to people. And on top of that, with everything going in the media, it just kind of shows his true, his true colors. It shows the true nature, your character of who you are. This ain't it, man. This, this seriously is not it. This is just part one because I believe part two will shock you. And I don't want to get to the point where I have to do part two and I really have to expose a lot of things that might get me sued. So I'm working on something right now. I know this may sound really crazy because, you know. I yeah, then he, then he asks for like money for a GoFundMe just in case, blah, blah, blah. That's, bad. That's wild to me, I think. I agree. If you got that much money, even if... You know, you you'd say, all right, we're we're just gonna use your idea. Here's like, you know, here's five hundred dollars for at least a day that you work there. Thanks for the idea. Whatever it might be, some sort of like compensation, but to not pay anything and then use the video. And like he says, just from one video, for example, he would make millions of dollars just from one video. So that's just ridiculous to me. I think wild that this, you know, these sorts of accusations are coming in thick and fast. And there's more and more, you know, more and more accusations every single day of this happening. Like I said here on the right, you can say, Mr. B situation got way worse. All these people are calling him out, you know, ex-workers who just like, you know, he, he knows about this stuff, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I guess run your company better, especially when it's that big. I mean, just to... You could imagine how many ideas they've actually stolen 
in total, right? How many ideas, ideas they've brought people in, they give the ideas or, you know, that sort of thing. It's just crazy. And it's quite, yeah, that's the only reason why I want to make a video of this today. It's just to actually shed some light that, you know, yet again, I don't know, yet again, so many young kids, so many young guys are fully, you know, if, if you say, oh, would you want to be Mr. Beast? And then 100% would say yes, you know? They all would want to be like him. They want to be the, the guy who makes these YouTube videos and all this type of stuff. And yeah, as you can see here, try zoom in here. So as the girlfriend says, uh, Mr. Beast's girlfriend says, only half of the accusations are true. And you can see here that in an attempt to defend her boyfriend, Jimmy, Mr. Beast Donaldson's girlfriend, has made him possibly look even worse. It does make you look worse because now she's saying that even half of them are true and this is a person who's dating him. Yeah, it's, it's just not a good look. And this person's going to get sued for a ton of money. It might even be the end of Mr. Beast. And that's the thing too. You know, no one should be above the law. So I'm glad that there's actually some repercussions. And he deserves, especially if you knew what was going on. If, if, you, if you knew this was going on in your company, that's even worse. But a lot of times these kind of smaller bosses would, you know, kind of take these times to make money for themselves, get the kind of, you know, say that idea was my idea when it was never their idea. And unfortunately, that's the way the company's run. So it looks bad on him, like that Thai guy said. Um, I'll also link the video, the normal video in the middle as well. And you'll be able to find us at Thai Ore. And yeah, just wanted to do a reaction on that. Just to kind of point the fact out that, yeah, these celebrities, eh, there's, there's always a dark side to every celebrity. And his has been exposed. So I'll end it on that. I mean, like the video if you liked it. Share this with your friends if they like Mr. Beast or YouTube and all that type of stuff. And also like the videos that you like. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.